Okay, if I remember where I left off was talking about the lizard and how I thought it looked completely ridiculous. Let's talk about the rest of the cast, and... I want to know. I really, really want to know whose genius idea it was to cast Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. Because I cannot think of a worse person to cast for him. In, I don't think it's through any inability of him, his own skill. What I think it is, is the script. Um, the writer didn't know anything about the characters. They made Gwen Stacy the second, or the first smartest person in her class. This is a woman who was having a relationship with Harry Osborn and Flash Thompson before dating Peter Parker in the comics because she couldn't have him. Think about this for a moment. She couldn't have Peter Parker, so she dates a nerd and a jock at the same time in order to make him jealous. This isn't an intellectual giant we're dealing with. And I can understand changing her character to someone, you know, polar opposite of that, in order to, you know, not get a lot of people pissed off, men and women alike. But if you're going to cast anyone as a romantic role, I'll, I'll get back to that. That's, I'll get back to that. Andrew Garfield, though, he, yeah, he's this skinny, tall, dweeby-looking kid. I'm, okay, yeah, Peter Parker's supposed to be dweeby. He's not supposed to be tall, per se, but, yeah, he's supposed to be dweeby. Why is he on a skateboard acting like a complete jackass to everyone he meets? Um, the one scene before he gets bitten by the spider that he does anything remotely good is telling Flash Thompson, I'm not going to take a picture of you bullying a kid calls Flash Eugene and gets his ass kicked. Which is pretty much against Flash Thompson's character because he's supposed to be... Yeah, he ribs Peter Parker a bit, like, you're a nerd, I'm a jock. But he's not supposed to overtly go out and beat everybody to a pulp. Hell, there's a scene with Flash Thompson later on, not even 10 minutes, 20 minutes later, where he's playing basketball, knocks a ball into a paint can that this girl's working with, she says, oh, you did that on purpose? He goes, no, but I should have. That's not Flash Thompson. That's Kong from Ultimate Spider-Man, but that's not Flash Thompson. And Andrew Garfield, instead of playing off of, you know, I'm defending people, like I mentioned with Uncle Ben, he acts like this, the world owes me character. He's acting like the 90s Spider-Man, where... Instead of going, I'm Spider-Man, I gotta take care of Mary Jane, my friends, he's going through this broody phase where he's running away from his whole life and going, I am the spider. I'm not a man. I am the spider. It... it this is before he gets bitten by the spider. Why? And... It really feels disjointed. I mean, Peter Parker... And there's the infamous first issue where Peter pretty much swears re murders revenge on anyone who pisses him off. But right now, as it is, he's supposed to be this laid-back, yeah, nerd, but a laid-back good guy. He's supposed to be the epitome of the good guy, which is why all these bad things keep happening to him. In this movie, he's not likable at all. And Andrew Garfield, bless his heart, tries to be. Um, and it really feels disjointed. It, that's the best way I could put it. I don't like the casting decision still, even if they got the script right, mainly because everyone has this image of Peter Parker still not being that lanky, including myself. But I also have this image of Peter Parker not having a ridiculously moosed up hairstyle that looks like his hair is the size of his head. 
um, I pulled this out earlier. That mask, that's not warped, le or warped from the lettering. That's from his hair. That's what I mean by fro cover. Um, then you have Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, and if I hadn't seen Zombieland, I wouldn't know she could act. There's a scene where she's supposed to be showing her chemistry with Peter Parker, and the dialogue, I'm not exaggerating, it, it's Peter Parker going, maybe you, you and I should, um, um, or something else, or, um, yeah, uh, or that, that, and she's interrupts and goes, yeah, uh, th that, that sounds good, and they're looking at each other like, I don't even know you. Why are you asking her out? They're barely looking at each other. They're kind of like, we're perfect strangers. It's like watching Twilight. I mean, you know, with Edward Cullen stalking Kristen Stewart for some inexplicable reason. Maybe he just likes women with no expression. Except with Andrew Garfield, it's, hey, it's Emma Stone. But we have absolutely no chemistry together. It, and she's not even supposed to be that awkward. He is just that awkward with her that it rubs off on her. And it comes off not as two kids falling in love. It comes off as two kids that really, really... Like two shy people on a first date that don't really like each other but have to go on this date because they couldn't find anyone else. What? Awkward contagion. Yeah, that's she said. Awkward contagion. It just comes off very, very forced. Um, Aunt May... Are you forking with me there? <laughs> um, Aunt May, traditionally, you know, 60, 70 years old when he's a teenager, looks like she's maybe in her late 50s. And, yeah, I know there's cartoons where she's acting all spry and everything, and this, she's acting like a grandmother. I mean, Peter comes home from, presumably, Fight Club, because he won't tell her he, he's Spider-Man. And, um... Yeah, she tells him to pull back his hoodie. Fight <laughs> Club! She tells him to pull back his hoodie, and she sees all these bruises on his face. She goes, where'd you get those? He goes, I can't tell you. And I went, I leaned over to Tyler Me Happy said, he can't talk about Fight Club. Tyler Durden warned him once. I mean... <laughs> It's just so bad. Because he's just looking at her. Even in the end of the movie, he's all beaten up. His face is bloody. And rough he, night. He, yeah, all he says is, rough night. Looks like a kick. And hugs her. And she's, she's like, I understand. He's I won't ask you about Tyler Durden ever again. Apparently, Brad Pitt went in there and went, that's a big cuck. And... <laughs> I, yeah, it's like, why are you yelling at him? He's coming home bleeding, bloody, broken bones every day. Hang on. And you're letting him do this! You're not a good parent! You're a dumbass! Anyway, hang on. It's kid puppy syndrome. That's it's really what it is. It's kid puppy syndrome. He comes home looking all sappy eyed, and she doesn't have the heart to ask him. Yeah, That's all it is. Yeah, he comes home like this. Like, he's beaten, beaten bloody, and <laughs> there you go. And then he just looks so sad, and she's like, it's okay, I'll let you get the crap beaten out of me. She spoils him rotten, even in the scene where Uncle Ben, he was supposed to pick up Aunt May, and Uncle Ben says, or go tells apologize. him, you forgot, tell, or go apologize. He walks in and apologizes to her, she goes, oh, you don't need to apologize. Like, nothing happened! She had to walk 12 blocks to New York! Manhattan, no less. He, in Queens, and there are bad areas in Queens. That, as far as I know, there are. If SVU used to be believed, and I don't know how accurate <laughs> that is. But um, in SVU, everyone gets raped. It, it's <laughs> fucking New York. You don't leave old women to walk twelve blocks back home in New York. If anything, they both should have tormented him. They should have grounded his ass. I mean, but Aunt May's a big girl. <laughs> She's an old woman, okay? Um, I got my big girl on. And it's like you have Martin Sheen being this father, and I swear there's scenes where he's like, 
This is what I should have done to Charlie. Oh. And, you know, he should have disciplined, like, he should have disciplined Charlie Sheen more. And I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm not saying he did it when Charlie Sheen was a kid. I'm not saying Martin Sheen's a bad father. It's not good into parenting issues. Yeah. I mean, I have the utmost respect for Martin Sheen. Not so much Charlie, but Martin Sheen I do. And he's the father figure in this movie. Aunt May's the mother figure. And Peter Parker basically just goes, I don't need you. Throughout the entire damn film. That's not Peter Parker. I mean, even when Uncle Ben is killed, you barely notice Peter Parker's upset. And he's just like, I'm brooding now. And brood, and brood, and brood. Flash Thompson even tries to say, Hey man, I, I feel for you, man. I, I gotta give Flash Thompson credit there, because like, for as much as he'd been ripping on Parker and being a bully, he walks up and he's like, Your uncle's dead. I get it. I'm sorry. Yeah, after Peter after, Parker yeah. slams him into oh, well, a locker. In, 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 in Parker's defense, he didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I mean, Flash Thompson legitimately tries to be a good guy throughout the rest of that film from that yeah. point on. I mean, even some credit for that, you know? even in the end, he's wearing a Spider-Man shirt, <laughs> that was and hilarious. Peter Parker goes, uh, "Nice shirt." He goes, "Yeah." He gets all the chicks. I'm like, <laughs> chicks dig him, and he's like, yeah. "That's like one of the few parts I liked in the film because that's a Flash Thompson line. It really is." But uh, yeah, I I can almost understand why people like this movie, almost, except. And for one big point, as I was watching this movie, I'm like, this seems familiar. And a lot of people have been comparing it to the first movie. I'm comparing it to Batman Begins. Because everybody who's seen the movie, which is a lot of people, remember, Scarecrow was using the gas to help raise out gold take over the city to cleanse it. Lizard is doing the same thing. Um, and I think they're going to run into the same problems that, inevitably, the Avengers is going to run into, and Batman's running into. Every plot is going to be, New York's going to be destroyed, and we need to save it. Um, with Spider-Man, you can't do that. You have to have personal stakes. I mean, they're probably going to do the Green Goblin, especially if the, in the, during the credits scene with the shadow figure that either is the Jackal or Norman Osborn. But going on that whole line of there has to be personal six, I think that's that might be the only thing that if they get different writers saves the movies is well, to make them a bit more compelling because it's not just well the city's in peril. The thing is, they rush too fast into that is what I'm saying. Mm, true. Um, because if they do the Green Goblin in the next movie, they're going to have to kill Gwen Stacy if they're going to do this right. And they haven't so far because they didn't even introduce Betty Brant. But, um... Or J. Jonah Jameson. I mean, seriously. Arlie Ermey as jo J. Jonah Jameson would have been hilarious. I mean, um, what's his name? The guy who plays Emil Skoda in um, Law and Order. But the, he played J. Jonah Jameson in the trilogy. Oh, that guy, yeah. He, he was outstanding. Oh, yeah. And I know they probably won't be able to bring him back. But um, he was great in that role. Absolutely awesome. Doc Ock, that's a stupid name. I know! Who call him Doc Ock? I mean, he, he, he chewed the scenery with that rule. And I think Arlie Ernie could do that even better. Like, Robbie Robinson's tried to calm him down. Seriously, man, Puck is a good photographer. I don't care about that, Jack Wagon! I just want the damn pictures! I mean, I can see this. Done. They didn't even bother introducing them. As far as you know, Peter Parker's just a photographer for the school. And that's only brought up once, just to say, see? Be happy. He's still a photographer. It, yeah, it, the it's... lizard destroys his camera. Yeah, and that's and how he, he has... figures out it's Peter pa or Spider-Man's Peter Parker. Or some he has, stuff. like, the same camera at the end of the movie. <sighs> the camera got saved to be a Diaz and Deus Ex Obviously to be continued, because I'm still running over, but, uh, hang on a bit.